Hello, I'm Mia Signs, and welcome to this episode of the Summer of Self-Love. I love this episode. It's wonderful. And in this episode, you get to meet Crystal Grenier, and she is a health and wellness coach. Uh, we work together. She worked with me um, a couple years ago when I needed some extra support. So I just had to have her on. So welcome, Crystal. Thank you for having me, Mia. I'm excited also, to be here. I'm excited to have you. And I'm also in her book that came out this year. Before we get into the whole topic of um, self-love, why don't you share with us about your book? My book, okay, Crystallizing Your Health, Thriving Through Chronic Illness is about my breast cancer journey and why I have a love of crystals. And I took a free workshop that I did two winters ago and took 13 of the 15 interviews and put them into a book. And I have three pillars of emotional health, of healing, which are nourishment, movement, and alchemy. So I took these interviews and broke them down into each part or these pillars. And then each of these interviewees either had a chronic illness, a couple of them did not, but we all talked about, it was based around questions that I asked during the free workshop around emotional health and healing. And I tied in the nourishment movement and alchemy components. And um, at the end of each part, I talked about what I knew about nourishment and what did I learn through these interviews. And the reason why I did this book, and I knew right away when I did the workshop that I wanted to write a book about it, is I wanted the, um, the gratification, the, the solidity and the affirmations of other people that were practicing holistic healing, because that's what I practiced to help me heal for my breast cancer journey. And so I threw those pieces after each part, like, what did I know about it? What did I learn? And then um, I, at the end, I concluded everything up in just tying it all together. And then after each part, I have activities. So I have journaling questions, art therapy, which I love. Um, I have a yoga, 30 minute yoga that, cause I'm a yoga instructor that I taught that you can scan and do, and then a meditation. So the book just kind of flowed with the meat of it being the interviews and then my story and then the activities. And so how I emotionally worked on my health which I believe is the manifestation of my cancer and the holistic healing that I practiced and what I received and learned from other people, learned from others that are in that field. Yeah. So that's kind and, of it in a nutshell. Yeah. And you know what, when you said <laughs> um, you worked on your emotional health because that was a manifestation of the cancer, what most people don't understand is not just bad gut health and poor health, but also our emotional health is what produces illness. So thank you for, for doing that. And also I have a copy of that book and I'm in it. Yay. And, and then I, then what was really cool is that I took um, crystals that are yes. tied into emotional health and I, based upon the interview and the person and the connection, I, gave each one of them a crystal I'm rose quartz you are rose quartz i know self-love so there you go so yeah that was pretty cool i love doing that i thought that was uh, i loved how it all tied together and it all came together <clears throat> very beautifully so yeah, i'm very pleased very lovely congrats Thanks. on that that's exciting thank you mia thank you thank you okay so let's get into the juicy <laughs> topic of okay. when did you discover and how self-love when did it come into you? Okay. So for me, I believe cancer came to me as a message. Um, prior to receiving breast cancer, <clears throat> I'm a very active woman. I have been a fitness trainer, a personal trainer for years, pretty much practiced a healthy lifestyle. So when I discovered a lump in my armpit diagnosed with breast cancer, I really wanted to hone in and discover and figure out why and how, you know, because you go through all the emotions, you know, Mia, you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. So I dove into the emotional component of <clears throat> receiving my cancer. And with that, 
research and that discovery came the self-love component. I was always one to seek external happiness. It was always outside of me. Like, oh, I need the bigger house. I need the car. I need this money. I need that to make me happy. Mm -hmm. Well, bottom line, it all comes from within. It's internal. So I seriously, after going through chemotherapy and radiation, that's when I really started to focus and hone in on loving me for who I am and where I'm at and just being present and aware of my choices to help me heal and stay cancer free or disease free. Right. So probably, yeah, probably after my treatments, excuse me, after going through the cancer and the treatments, then I really started to focus in on the self-love component. Yeah. You know, I discovered that, um, and you're so right. And I'm so grateful that you um, shared about the, the self-love being a healer for cancer and it is for disease. We both um, either approached it in the same or different it doesn't matter but the way we handled it or look at it right uh -huh. in the eyes of love and that sounds so strange with cancer right the first two times I battled it I was the warrior and yet when I wasn't being the warrior I was being the monk I was constantly for me constantly meditating constantly affirmationing I am cancer free and um, what I discovered during the second time was I was still giving my space away, just like you, right? Giving out to the world to certain people rather than focusing inward. And that's really beautiful because no matter what we have, whether we're sad, whether we're diseased, whether we're whatever, it all needs to be cleaned up internally, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Talk on that a little bit. I'm um, talking about cleaning up internally. Yes. <clears throat> well, for me, I'm a very type A person. Very um, yes, 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 yes. I've learned to set boundaries by saying no. Um, honing in on my emotional piece, I was the type of person where I would stuff, 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 like the emotional stuffing in my childhood and young adulthood. Um, just doing what I needed to do to make everybody happy and be a pleaser. And then I would explode sometimes like three or four days later. And my poor husband's like, what's wrong with you? I thought we were done with that because I would just like release and let go. So I've learned through my um, healing process that I address the, instead of reacting to something, I listen and I verbalize that I understand where they're coming from. And I say, I need some time to process this. I'm going to think about this for whatever time frame, and then I'm going to come back and I'll talk to you. So that's something that I've really honed in on to um, make. Uh, it's a it's a practice and it's a change that I've implemented into my life, and it's it's helped me so much because then I'm not harboring it and stuffing it, stuffing it, stuffing it, and getting sick again. And so I'm still like taking time to process it, but I'm not holding on to it. So I'm, so I'm, you know, I'm naming it, I'm challenging it, I'm changing it if I need to, just like I say in my book. And um, then I address it and then it's gone. Then I let it go. Good. I yeah. like that because people who, and look, we're all people pleasers for the most part until we're not, right? And those of us who have been people pleasers out of survival skills even, um, that's a really beautiful space to know how to say and to, you had to practice that before you were proficient in saying, wait a minute, I'll, I need to process this, I'll come back to you. And mm -hmm. that that's really really wonderful that you do that and that's also really amazing advice because most people don't stop and to uh, contemplate it and think about it if they don't have the answers or can't communicate in the moment and then go forward something that happens to some people maybe to you I know to me um, mm -hmm. is my voice box my language center just shuts down that's it and so sometimes people think everything's okay, you know, in the intimate, in my, in my life, you know, in my mm -hmm. everyday life, not in, you know, our online life, but 
if I'm with somebody that I love and they do something, I shut down. I can't talk. So it's really beautiful that you've developed that. I've, I've developed my skills to be able to talk now, but it takes, it's because we've had trauma that it makes us in this place. So I love to hear that you, that you shared that. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, and again, I was like you, I would just shut down and walk away because I, I just wanted to like avoid it, you know? So I'd walk out of the room and just shut down and, and, um, yeah. And there's certain people in my life that like they're used to that reaction because that's how I've been. So you, they're used to like throwing something out and they want me to react. And so I had to basically, and my brother's this person and I basically had to tell him, I'm like, you know, I can't do this anymore. This is how I'm processing. And I had to basically verbalize what I was doing just to hear myself say it, I think, to make it more believable, you know, like, so yeah, I've just, I've had some people that trigger me like that and they have for years and I had to basically say, I'm changing, this is what I'm doing now and this is how I'm addressing things and that's just the way it is. So if it doesn't work for you, I'm sorry, but I need to do this for me, so. That's brilliant, thank you, because that's really, yeah. brave. really, really brave, thank you. Thank you. So share with us. I mean, that's a huge self-love tool right there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. But share with us at least three other self-love tools that you love to either do yourself or to share with your clients. Mm, okay. So, well, I have more than three. So, but you only want three. <laughs> I have so many now. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do massage once a month. That's self-love for my body physically and mentally. Um. I do, I like to be outside in nature, like walking my movement component, you know, just that's to me, that self-love, like being outside in nature and taking in all the, the senses, the smells, the sights, the sounds, all the things. And, um, uh, I do chiropractic care. I'm just kind of going, this is all to me, self-love. I do this once a month. So I get the chiropractic my massage and my stretch therapy. Those are three things that I do. Yeah. You know, like you can bundle that up into one, mm -hmm. you know, um, I do go, I see a nature path to me. This is self-love. I pay out of pocket for supplements and for lymph. She does lymph processing procedures on me. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's an investment that I pay for out of my pocket. But to me, that's self-love because I'm caring for myself to stay holistically healthy. So, so that's about four or five. Um, and what would you recommend for, um, for clients, for people who, because not everybody yeah. needs that. So you had mentioned some other stuff like yoga and journaling and art. Yeah. Can we get into um, some of those conversations like yoga? You're, yeah. You're the yoga instructor, but the way that I see it is that you're working on your breath, mm -hmm. holding your stretching positions, right? As yeah. You need. And so that's really like an attunement self, isn't it? What yeah. Else, what are the other benefits that people are getting from like doing yoga as a self-love practice? You're getting, um, you're getting a mental, um, what am I trying to say? A mental awareness because you have to be present in your body and on your mat instead of just going through the motions of doing the poses and the positions and holding your breath. Cause a lot of people do that. You are, you're just being present on your mat for your session in that time. And you're aware of what you're doing. So you're incorporating your breath, right. To inhale, exhale, to release tension and stress and, relax your body and everything internally as well. Um, you're getting, you're gaining strength, which we need as we age and get older and um, your flexibility, you know, you're, you're stretching those muscles and elongating your fascia and, and lengthening your body and correcting your posture. So physically, mentally, emotionally, um, socially you know you're coming to a yoga session to maybe 
meet other women or men that are experiencing what you're experiencing and you can talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, spiritually, it can, it can touch on that well-being component as well. You Mm -hmm. know, what, whatever your higher, um, being is or what you believe in, like you can take yourself there with Shavasana. So, um, and that's, you know, being under that movement pillar of healing in my emotional, um, paradigm, you could, you know, journaling is a good one. Art therapy. Like I have a, a crystal heart in my book that you can color. You know, I think art therapy is cool. Painting, drawing, coloring, um, the nourishment component. You know, what do you feed yourself? What do you eat? You know, that's huge. Yes. Right. No. Um, I'm vegan. I've been vegan for almost three years and it it's for me. It works for me. I love it. I feel good when I eat that way. I know everybody can't eat that way and that's okay. But, you know, make those good, healthy food choices, mm. you know, because that's good. It's going to make you feel better if you eat better. Mm-hmm. Right. Hydration, water, um, going into the emotional component. We talked about that a little bit with the alchemy and how to process your emotions a little bit. So meditation, you know, we've both done that. That's a huge that's a huge plus to it mentally is. just relax and de-stress and again put yourself in that moment in that presence Mm. that's been a huge thing for me is being present you know instead of constantly acting and grasping and reaching for everything around me just Mm. let stuff flow you know like flow with my business flow with clients you know like just and it's been it's been breathtaking really you know so yeah I love the um, I love the idea of I want to talk a little bit about the art therapy because sure. I I picked up uh, paints being an artist during mm-hmm. um, the first time around to heal in in cancer and I found it profound and I have a lot of coaching friends who are art therapy uh, uh, coaches. But the emotion and the connection that we can get is really, is really amazing. Yeah. Such as asking yourself um, or your higher self or God, show me what I need to uh, do here, what colors to work with in order to release X, Y, and Z, or in order to bring to the canvas my emotion inside to there. Or I, I did somewhere, it was um, healing cancer and what it looked like to me on the ultrasound. And mm-hmm. it's brilliant when we connect. It's sort of like a meditative space, isn't it? Yeah. That, that my art actually turned out nothing like what I would think. When I first start, it's, I do it sort of meditatively like that. And it turns out exactly what I want, but I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You used to teach classes on that. Didn't you? Yes, exactly. yes, I remember that. Yeah. And I will again. Um, I hope so, because yeah. I will definitely join you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. And also um, body positive art therapy, too, is something that I love to teach because we can take two different canvases, do one how we see our body, and then one how we more in alignment of self-love see our body. And the two are completely different. Come wow. on different yeah it's it's so beautiful to to nestle down into the the love of self to be able to get your emotional state and your spiritual state out on the canvas i love it right. can't wait but, to be again. i know i'm excited because i would love to join you with that and two i was and something just came into my mind when you said that it's like we everything is internalized like we always think 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 what we could say what it could have should have but you're right. When you take it out of here and put it on a piece of paper or a canvas, you're releasing it too, just like you're releasing emotion, you know, like you're releasing it onto something else and then you can view it mm-hmm. instead of looking at it up here because it's all never clear sometimes. Right. right. You know what I mean, yeah. we get confused until we're not, right? The emotion yeah. overtake us. And until we learn how to get still, um, they're just going to keep going round and round or have that monkey mind, so to speak, that yeah. technology. So yeah, it's a really beautiful space. Uh, the art therapy, the painting, even, even for those who 
don't know what to do, but just want to get your hands in paint, just get paint and a canvas or paper and like a little kid, put it on there and just see what you can do, right? Yeah. You can do anything. You can get a coloring book and yeah, your special thing. They have adult coloring books and I don't mean sexual ones. I mean, ones that are just not cartoony for, for adults. They're adult cartoons, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I just thought of something too with that. It's like, and even with my heart crystal, you know, you're coloring within the lines too, which I've always been as a girl, I had to stay in the lines. Like that was just, you know, cause I'm such a perfectionist, yeah. but with your painting, you can be outside the lines, yeah. Yeah. right? Like you can step out of that yeah. box of boundary and just yeah. explore and flow. So, yeah. You know, as you said that, I thought about it and I thought sometimes though, I like to stay within. I know. me too. <laughs> I do too. I admit it. I do. I can't, can't help it. I do too. And, then and that's also, okay. Yeah. And then also releasing to outside the, the box, the lines is good too. Yeah. I think it's a happy medium. Is it not? Like it's okay to, yes. yeah, it's okay. Yeah. And as we move through life experiences, we're going to shift and change oh, yeah. that's how it is. Um, so, yeah. So then we find maybe a little bit less else, you know, outside the lines than normal. So, yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, now you spoke about your book hmm. at the moment. That's your, what, well, I shouldn't say at the moment, but that's what you're giving away. Correct. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. I'll do a sign. Well, I can't really sign it because it's going to be digital. Right, but right, exactly. yeah. yeah, yeah. But it'll be very profound for people and wonderful. So yes, it is. It will be. Yeah. Is, I there, think. is there anything else you'd like to share before we say goodbye? Our time has flown by. Oh my gosh, that was I, so quick. I know. Um, oh my gosh, I think just I think I wanted to share that. Um, you don't have to be sick to read my to read my book or read anything right. that has chronic illness in it or on the title because a lot of people that I've worked with have been proactive in their place of healing. You know, um, some people are in the midst of a, of an illness or a disease. Some people are post. So, I think being proactive is a really good place to be if you've never fortunately had to experience a disease like you and I have um take those steps now especially as we age because um you don't want to wait until you have that ache and pain and then tell a doctor that you need to take this this or this to fix it you know so I think it's just really important to be really aware of where you are with your health emo especially emotionally you know in, in all places of well-being physically mentally emotionally spiritually, um, socially, even financially, and, and realize that you have choices to help you heal. That's important that you, you know, you don't have to do the holistic route like some of us do, but you just know that you have choices to help you um, veer down that path of staying healthy as you get older in age. And also, I really love that you said you don't have to have chronic illness to get a benefit from this book. Now, I want to go touch on that for a minute. That okay. is perfectly perfect because um, most people don't realize, I've been doing a lot of uh, studying, writing uh, on chronic illness. And so our, a lot of people have depression. Guess what, guys? You have chronic illness. That yes. is a chronic illness because you're not elevated up and out. So yeah. if your body is still in shape, Great. That's wonderful. Get the mental in shape and the body will flow and follow suit. So Agreed. I'm yeah. grateful that you um, brought that up because that's something that most people don't realize. And it's incredibly important to understand that um, treat yourself that much love. You know, that's real self-love when you get into, well, I've been depressed for a long time. So let me see how I can get out of that. Um, and treating it like a chronic illness is not a shame. It's not mm -hmm. shameful. It's wow. Let's see about getting rid of it. You know, yeah. by lovingly to the chronic illness. So beautiful. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on here. 
Thanks, Mia, for having me. It's been, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what comes forth with your book and your, um, I mean, you're doing like a, is it a podcast? No, it's a, um, on, what so, is it called? Um, the Summer of Self Love. Right. For the show. It's and gonna it's be a show. That's right. The, it's exploring the deep dive into ourselves. And so for those of you who haven't seen it yet, thank you, Crystal. You're um, welcome. The book is out with this show. And so you can get it on Amazon, The Summer of Self Love. And Crystal will be in the book and a lot of the other guests are in the book and there's also other writings that you want to know about self-love. So really beautiful. Thank you. Yes. So yeah, thank you for having me as always. I appreciate it. Thank you, honey. And thank you all for joining us and we'll see you again. Bye.